G'day everybody and welcome to my Aussie Gardening Kitchen. If it's your first time here, my name is Darren, but please call me Daz. And in this video, we're going to look at how I propagate my blackberries. And then not only that, we're actually going to jump ahead in time by say four or five weeks. And we're going to look at some cuttings that I've already done. And we're just going to see how they're going and to give you an idea of what to look out for in about a month or so after you actually do this process yourself. So yeah, stick around and let's go. Blackberries are such a good berry to have in the garden. They're full of antioxidants, vitamins, flavor. You can make cakes, sauces, desserts, berry compotes, put them in iced tea, you name it. They're just fantastic. So why wouldn't you grow them at home if you could? And the thing that I love about the blackberries is that it's so easy to propagate them and build up the numbers. And it's virtually, well, it's free. It doesn't cost you money. You don't need to be buying other plants. Once you've got one, that's it. You can move along and start propagating them and you can have them all over the place. Now, blackberries can have a reputation for being a pest and for spreading too much, but you can have them in the home garden and you can easily control them. It's no real big deal. So I really do recommend that along with other fruits and berries, you get yourself some blackberries and give it a go. So the variety of blackberry that I have here is a thornless blackberry. It's a Chester variety which is fantastic because you can just reach in and grab whatever you want and you're not worried about thorns scratching your hands and your arms or even your face. So it's a favorite of mine. It's the only one that I'll grow here and it's served me quite well. So with propagating blackberries, it's quite easy and there's two ways you can go about it. You can either take cuttings or you can also grab them and put the tips into soil. And this one here actually, this is only a year old and what I did with the mother plant was I grabbed, grabbed one of the branches like this, got a pot of soil and just buried the end of it into a pot of soil deeply and then had that sitting on the ground. And I left it there for about probably two months. And then what eventually happened was when I pulled it up out of the soil, out of the tips, the roots grew and it became a new plant. And then all I had to do was up here about maybe eight or 10 inches, I just cut it off and then I took that out into the orchard here and put it into the ground. And as you can see, this is what's come of it. It's grown big. It's got other shoots coming up out of the ground. It's great. It's a great method that really does work. Blackberries love propagating that way. So just using a pot and grabbing your tip and burying it like that, that's one way to do it. So the other way to go about it is to take cuttings. All right, so I've got this guy here. And as you can see, the tips here, this is what I was talking about, where you can just pop it into a container and bury it and it'll shoot out the roots. But what I'm gonna to do today is I want a cutting from this one. So I'm just gonna come down and you can see, when I was talking about the buds, there's a bud there, there's a bud there, there and there. And there's another one here. So I'm gonna cut it between the bud here and here, just like that just up a little bit from that bud so I don't damage that one when it wants to grow. And there we go. That is my cutting, as simple as that. Now, if this had leaves coming out from the branches here, here, and here, I'd strip these leaves. And then when I pop it in, I only want a few leaves on top to grab a bit of energy, but I really want it to focus on growing and shooting out from the bottom here. All right, so here we are. We're back again and we've got the cutting that I've just taken, as you can see. It's yay high and we've got a few leaves here, a few leaves here. I did debate about taking these leaves here off this branch, but I'm going to leave it on. And then all it is, is a matter of either way you can go water, done. That's it. That's all you need to do is just place it in some water. Now the advantage of putting it into the water is that you can actually see the roots growing out of the bottom. So you can see the progress as time goes by. Now, I prefer the soil method, but that's just me. If you do use the water method, you need to change this water weekly. Do not leave the water there the whole time. So you need to take it out. And what I actually do is if I was to do it in water like this, I'd actually take it out, give that a bit of a rinse and change that and make that clean water. And if possible, use rainwater. I prefer not to use town water with all the stuff they add to it. Fortunately, I've got rainwater collection here. So I use rainwater on all my plants. I've never used town water on anything at all. So that's one method. 
Now, the other way that I do it myself personally is to grab myself a container. This one, for instance, just for a single cutting. And in here, we've got my soil. It's basically sand from my yard mixed with compost that I make myself here, blended it all together. And I sieve that to get all the lumps and everything out. And then it's quite simply just a matter of, I just make a hole with my finger, pushing it down like so, grabbing this and sticking it in like that. Not all the way to the bottom. I leave it maybe yay high from the bottom and just packing the soil back in around it. And then I'll give that a water and that's all there is to it. So that's it then. All I will do now is over the next four weeks to five weeks, I'll keep water up to it just to keep the soil slightly moist, not too damp. And then after that period of say the four to five weeks, I'll gently shake it a bit, squeeze it a bit, and pull it out and just see if the roots have taken. And if they have, in the case of this one being a single one, I'll actually let it stay in a bit longer and grow a bit bigger. And then I'll transplant that in the garden somewhere. So here you go. This is two pots with cuttings that I took about four to five weeks ago. And these ones are from all along the branch. So rather than being the very tip and down like this one, they're actually, imagine that I've tip pruned this because that's what I've actually done is I've gone along and I've tip pruned my bushes already. And I'll explain in another video why I tip prune my blackberries. So in the case of these, these have come from tip prune. So imagine this with the tip gone. So from here down, and this is where we are now at four to five weeks later. So I've put three in each one, and it's just a matter of waiting, keeping the water up to them. I put a little, little bit of sugarcane mulch, just to mulch the top of it to keep out weeds and retain the moisture. And also what I'd like to do personally is I like to recycle old containers. This is a meat container from the kitchen. I think ground beef or minced meat, as we say in Australia, came in this. And I like to sit my pots in this and catch any water and just keep an eye on it, make sure it's not filled up with water. And then that way, when I water, the water's going to go down and be caught in here. And then that'll wick up into the soil and it just keeps the plant moist. You can see that this one here's got quite a lot of green growth down at the base, whereas this one, it has some, but it looks like they've probably all taken. So what I might actually do is I'll pull one out and we'll have a look and see what the roots look like, if there's any roots. I'm just loosening the soil gently around the edge of the plant. Just in case roots have taken higher up for some reason, I don't want to break those really fragile roots. So again, I'm just pushing the soil, but <laughs> nowhere near it. I'm smiling because I can see white roots. So yeah, it looks like the roots have actually taken higher up on the stem. So yeah, there you go. There's an example of not digging down along the stem and really getting in there because I don't want to break those nice fragile roots. All right, so I'm not ready to take this out yet. I want to leave these in for a couple more weeks. So rather than pull it out and show you what the roots look like, I'll give you a close up of the roots down in there. And yeah, there you go. It's quite successful. As I've said, I used rooting hormone, but you don't have to. Give it a go without it. If you have really bad luck and it doesn't take, maybe give rooting hormone a go. But as you can see, all I've done is just taken a branch off the bush, cut it in a few places, stuck it in some soil, and away you go. Just be patient. And now I've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly seven bushes that I'm gonna be able to plant out into my yard and we'll just have so many blackberries. It's gonna be fantastic. So there you go. I hope you give it a go yourself. It's quite easy. And as you can see, there's such good reward from such little work and you can't go wrong with so many blackberries, I'd say. So give it a go and enjoy. Cheers. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please consider giving it a thumbs up just down there below. And also if you do subscribe, it's totally free. Ticking the bell beside the subscribe button gives you notifications of when I go live and you can have live chats with me. And also it lets you know when all my new videos come out. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, pop them down in the comments below. I always read my comments. I always answer my comments. 
and it's great to communicate backwards and forwards with you guys. So by all means, pop your comments down below and yeah, away we go. So thanks very much. I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Bye.